All right. Well, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. I've got all my charts loaded. We will look at some of that. And of course, uh, tomorrow, the Active Trader, the M3 Active Trader class is where we'll dive into specifics and what everything's doing. We can look at some today and look at the scanner, seeing if anything pops up. The uh, biggest news kind of on that I saw this morning is about the debt limit. And so uh, the uh, coming up to the uh, you know Janet Yellen said that we're coming right up on that uh, time limit. So they'll probably have to raise it, but it is a little bit concerning as far as what we could see after that. So we were kind of at crisis levels on the national debt. So uh, it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, the uh, I, We are seeing some nice bullish momentum here, just to pull up a chart of Bitcoin on the monthly. And um, this in and of itself, just this monthly, looks very bullish here if if we can close where at current levels right so big bullish engulfing candle and uh this is uh, also sitting at that 100 uh ema here so on this monthly so again the 100 month exponential moving average so this to me tells me we should push up higher how high we go i mean it is still uh, a bear market technically and so i'm just on a macro level i think we'll probably come up and see something like this and either a higher low and we go higher or there still is that possibility that we have a deeper drop and we just don't know there's no way to tell so what we want to be you know doing on an overall basis is look for opportunities here on this push higher so if we said 32,000 was a likely bounce point we'll look at it on tomorrow's class a little deeper and uh, so, let's see, questions, guys, anything, nothing so far. All right, well, this is uh, really supposed to be the interactive class, so please, uh, any questions at all are um, welcome. And sometimes you guys are quiet, and then I see questions in the signal room. This is the best place to get those answered. Uh, let's see, Polygon completes a hard fork to reduce gas, uh, gas fees, spikes, not huge news, Litecoin, you know, Litecoin's kind of that sleeper. Maybe we'll look at that because we haven't been watching Litecoin much, but uh, it's I've been hearing more about it. And so in terms of does that become one of the biggest currencies? So, Joe, I know you trade Litecoin a lot more than I have. I did trade it in 2021, 2022, just wasn't doing what I wanted to see on the charts. But um, if you uh, want to chime in or just say hi to everybody, I'm going to still dig around for some news here. Hi everyone. Uh, Litecoin has um, has been a really great uh, market. You know, um, it's also uh, trending up higher. Everything is really moving higher right now. So it'd be interesting to see how we close out on the monthly this this month and the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> and and just on that point, uh, you know, it's, I haven't looked at this in a while, but even on the quarterly, so. That would be, um, you can create your own uh, ranges down here. So that would kind of be, you can say a 90 day or three month. And let's do a three month, same, same. And uh, did it add that? Three months, three months. Yeah. So not many of these, if you zoom out on this quarterly, still we have this big bullish engulfing candle. So, you know, you guys, we, we've talked about this before, and this is an even easier way to see it. This is a little bit, uh, it's not really advanced, but these big candles where the markets make the biggest moves, they tend to come back and test the midpoint. And this is an old, I won't call it a trick, but just back in the day trading days, you know, like here had this big push higher, came back and retested it, bounced off when went, went back higher. It's kind of like these CME gaps, you know, so if we did the midpoint, same kind of thing. And um you know, this one here, there has to be sort of an unusually large one. Some people call them vector candles. I won't go into what that means. This came back and retested. And then we had this one here that pushed up way higher and came back and retested that midpoint. I, there's, you know, there's, there's mechanics involved in there that have to do with the um, bigger markets, uh, CME, and, and uh, they don't really actually take losses. They can do things to pump up kick the ball down the field as it were so but this at any rate just just look for these unusually large candles here so this one came back and retested it so i think probably likely we push higher and on the flip side how high could we go this is kind of my point at least to thirty thousand to test this midpoint 
there, there's no science. And some of you might be saying, well, well, how do you know what a vector can looks like, uh, for lack of a better term? Just these unusually large moves. You know, this one is sort of not unusually large, right? These, these smaller ones, these are sort of what you might expect to see. But these big pushes higher and lower, they visually stand out in the charts. Typically, I find they test the midpoint. So my overall thesis is, you know, it's a wild ass guess at this point, but uh, that we do push higher. Oops, it's hard. To, this tool doesn't draw well on the uh, monthly larger time frames. But we go up here, we'll at least see some pullback. I think in this thirty thousand range, maybe a bit closer to thirty one thousand, and either then go higher or lower. And uh, that's a big question mark. So we don't need to know this. We just need to kind of have a uh, overall thesis that that we're pushing higher. And I, I think we do, but how for how long? So what does that mean? It means you want to be sure to capitalize on these opportunities. And as Joe said, we were, um, I say we, I was in a business seminar on Friday. Let me get to a different chart here that isn't so messy. And uh, sitting with another uh, smart uh, crypto trader, it was a e business seminar, but uh, he looked over at me and he said, he mouthed, you know, oh my God, you know, and Ethereum was, pumping, pushing much higher. What a great last seven days we've had or since Friday, but really for the past week. And the early signal there was this 21 day crossing over the 50 day, but our radar was green, which is beautiful. I have been posting in the signal group for the active trader members. When we see all green on the radar, green is go. Uh, we've got red on the radar here, indicating a likely pullback here. But as you see, and I, this is what I was anticipating, either one of these. Now, now that we pushed higher like this, I think probably see actually i'm not sure i can uh, that's gonna either that well no i'm gonna redraw these so just to kick things off we are in it looks like we are in a new upward trending channel this blue line so one of the things that's really important in trading is identify when these new trend channels start to form so i'll just take some of these lines off of here and this you know again we're starting out with some pretty basic stuff and then we get into the the indicators but um uh, the old trend channel was basically this, and of course went higher up. But we were watching this really closely, right? And I had to note to myself, buy ETH over 1300. And uh, I did. I went in full on my IRA last week, so timed that pretty well. But uh, where are we now? Well, just to finish that thought is, but see, it was breaking above this trend channel. It tried here, and then we had a whole bunch of market contagion and bad news here back in November, and then the FTX. And so essentially... I do think we pull back into these ranges, but then go higher. And this is sort of falling in line with the overall. And so I would expect, sorry, to that we would stay within this upward trend channel. And so with that overall thesis, that's when we really turn to our indicators and say, all right, we, we think this, and let's take a look at what the indicators tell us. So I'm going to redo that just so it moves. I want to get rid of this. Sorry, guys, it's a little tricky jumping between these. There we go. And I want to make that a little taller so we capture all the move. And then I'm going to redraw this. So I think that we see something like this and hopefully stay in the upper quadrant of the trend channel because that's also a sign of strength. Do you see that? Above that 50% line here. This is ETH, but it's re representative of the overall market. And I think I think ETH leads this rally. I don't, I'm not convinced it's Bitcoin. We've been watching ETH dominance in the, um, the Wednesday class, and that's been looking really strong. So we should be sure to join us tomorrow. Uh, if you're not in the active trader class, uh, just reach out to us if you'd like to join that. Uh, some of you are in, yeah, yeah, just you, the users of Crypto Master here. And that's totally fine. There's uh, some of you are ready for that, some aren't. And, and we want to give an opportunity for your type of trading, no matter where you fall. And uh, so, any questions on that? This is just, again, forming our overall thesis here. So another supporting on that with our indicators is that if we think we'll pull back, well, what else looks gives us that impression? Well, we're up here on the overbought territory and the TSI on the daily. Uh, green is going up on the signal line on the trend indicator. I'll zoom out. Uh, is is also a is one of the take profit zones. So we might have two more days of upside or staying in this range. But I would caution if you know if you are trading Ethereum, this would be a good take profit uh, zone, and to maybe take half profits. And uh, you know, always I would say leave leave a moon bag on this. 
uh, for longer term, because Ethereum, Bitcoin, longer term, great projects, obviously. But in this range, I think a couple more days, take profit on the bag of money. And then we start seeing this pullback. So I might even bring this down in and it probably would happen uh, uh, faster here. We've seen fast moves here on these things. So, and this is just an approximation. Okay, so, <clears throat> and if you see start breaking down below that midline, that's also an indication or a weakness, but our ideal re-entry point would be down here. This is what I want to stress here is this upward trend channel. If we say, all right, it looks like we're this former trend channel is now gone. What I'm going to do though is, is just hide it. I'm not going to delete it. And um, uh, let's see if you guys don't know how to, use, how to use the object tree, it allows you to group things together. So I'm going to say prior cycle trend downtrend. Um, and that doesn't mean the, the, the macro cycle, just the sort of since last year. So I could have named that better, I guess. But at any rate, you get the idea. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, I'm going to put this trend line in there because we may want to refer back to that in the future. So I got this one here as well. Okay, so also showing you how you can do these. So uh, this just lets you keep a lot of different things in your chart without having to delete them entirely. All right, that being said, our ideal re-entry points would be down along this lower channel with our TSI and all of our things on a new cycle coming down around. And so what I'm also watching for, can anybody guess? What we're also watching for, I shouldn't say I, but um, you know, we, haven't, we don't have an ERI here, a bearish ERI. So... That uh, tells me we could still push higher here. I, I would still think it push, if we do break a bomb, probably pulls back in. You know, And the other tool we use is that Bollinger Band. And we're not at, it's quite, quite at the top of the Bollinger Band. We came right up here and hit it and sort of went sideways. But something like this is what I would expect with, with Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. So anyway, but that's just a review and how to use the indicators uh, overall. And uh, I don't know, Joe, do you have any... Uh, Words of wisdom, you've always got uh, gems there that to overlay. And again, that's the purpose of this class, really how to incorporate the indicators into your overall trading. Uh, well, it's just basically, you know, you want to set your alerts, you know, and, um, and it's pretty much right now where the market is at. You don't want to uh, chase and, uh, you know, you want to join, uh, move in accordingly you know, yeah. to your positioning. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, the alerts. So here I had had one at uh, crossing down below 1300, which would be another good buy spot. I guess I'll leave that there. But if we do see this, you know, you can't watch everything all the time. And uh, I've been sharing alerts in the other signal. So if we do get down to 1300, where would that also indicate? We're at that lower edge of the trend channel. So I'm going to leave it there, but I'm also going to set another alert here and unless, you know, if it's um, crossing down there at, let's uh, say, 1340, that would be another potential buy zone. I'll put a question mark, ETH buy, you know, to dollar cost average back into this. So, so in, a, in some, in short, this is the, the power of the indicators are really both getting in and getting out. And so what you want to be, you know, in the initial term, the radar a little bit was, uh, was somewhat confusing for people and when you have mixed signals here but what this it's not really mixed signals what this tells us is the four hours going up but that's here and over there i'm really looking the daily weekly monthly and so i guess we could even experiment with uh i'm not sure we could try that daily weekly monthly quarterly you know do a three month on a macro but when it's all green what this tells me is it's overbought on the daily it'll pull back in and then when it goes all green again, it's a good time to get back into this. So whether it's Ethereum or any of the coins, we did have some great movers last week. And uh, so kudos to you that uh, we're getting into those in, uh, in the basket, the active trader basket here. So we'll look at those in depth tomorrow. But, um, you know, you, uh, you must have some questions, everybody. So, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. I'm not going to go through all of these coins. That's what we do tomorrow in active trader. What we could do is look at some coins that you guys throw out. I have my own basket here. Generally, what I'll do is I'll come in and skim everything. The uh, altcoin perpetual is looking strong, though. Look at that. These, I drew this line a while ago. 
And that's what I think is going to happen. These Bollinger Bands will tighten, push us back up. All green on the radar. Interesting. So watch your altcoins, you guys. That radar you should have on your screen and you should have it set to these uh, time frames. If you don't know how and you're new, just right click on that and go to settings. Scroll down a bit. And uh, great job, Joe, on building this simple multi time frame indicator here. So here's where you can change these. And look at that. We could do a three month. Let's let's play around with this then. Why not? I'm going to change that to daily. Because the four hour doesn't tell me that much. It's more for swing trading on short time frame, possibly day trading. So I'll have it that way on my shorter time frame charts. But uh, on where we are right now, and this is important, where we are right now is we are trying to time this macro bottom. So uh, this would give us a, if some of you are more long-term and maybe put in the chat, just let me know, are you guys swing trading, looking for a multi-day, multi-week? Are you more buy and hold or looking to, and what I might suggest, looking to time or relatively time the market cycle low and also be ready when the market cycle high happens like last November. Because I was uh, telling people, telling you guys to get out in November of 2021, pounding the table to get out in 20 of 22. And uh, that was largely uh, because we had our TSIs weekly rolling over and uh, we were, were not watching the radar, but I imagine that was going all red. All right, thanks for the feedback, you guys. So I'll share that with everyone here. Uh, but look at this. So interesting, isn't it? So this says daily, weekly, monthly, we're bullish on the alt per, altcoin perpetual. Uh, on the three month, not quite there yet. So that would support this type of a pattern, right? If you just visualize in the short time frame, we always have cycles. But if those cycles are putting in higher lows over a longer time frame, it's bullish. So what I would imagine is as we come up in here on the daily, weekly, monthly, you know, maybe it's, well, the monthly's already green, but I imagine if we get up in this range, then that will be enough for the quarter three months to say, okay, all green here. So the ideal entry is obviously down in this range, maybe here, but we didn't get our signals. If we were to jump to a weekly, didn't trigger a weekly, so we're still kind of waiting on that. And uh, that is one of my concerns on the overall market. Bitcoin did not put in a weekly ERI. And what you'll start to, uh, by watching and learning and just keeping an eye, you'll start to really trust these, right? So the here back in November 2021, see that big red ERI. Um, always want to confirm on the TSI here. So then we saw the TSI breaking down to red. Similarly here, you know, we had a couple of, now this bullish ERI would have been invalidated. Why? TSI was still going down into the red. At this point, we're not even looking at these other things. Okay. And then we had a green TS, a green ERI with a TSI green. So this would have been a buy opportunity. If nothing else, then getting out of any shorts if you're short. So, and then nice little push up. Doesn't look like much, but we had, you know, 33%, 35% push higher. And then we had another ERI TSI confirmed green to red. So that was a strong indicator we headed lower. It's easy to armchair quarterback. Totally understand. Um, however, these are highly um, correlative. Correlative. So here we uh, didn't get the arrow here. We did get the T the ERI on the oscillator and then the green TSI push up higher reversed. So what point is what I'm looking for here, what we are looking for here is what we didn't get. We didn't get the weekly ERI and the TSI was, you know, sort of, it did push higher. So it's strong, but I'm just wondering, this is another reason why I think this thing bump comes down again. So and, and this chart is kind of a surrogate for anything. We could be looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever. But these are the patterns you want to look for. And so we could pull back on here. I think alts push up higher for the next uh, week and the next week. And then we pull back, hopefully put in a higher low. And it, it, ideally, it's a sharp reversal. And then we get the ERI and TSI. And then we're like, okay, this looks strong. I mean, that's really what I'm waiting for. 
and I suppose I should switch to uh, ETH here and just show the same thing. But um, so this I've had on here, this didn't play out. So clearly can't predict the future all the time. All we can do is uh, reevaluate new information is new decision. So here we're pushing up. I think we, you know, come up there, reject, if nothing else, because of this trend line here. Now, um, somebody had mentioned, which was good feedback that sometimes I don't zoom out all the way so you don't know why that trend line exists so just going out further uh this trend line is from the top here the top here and by the way i'm using logarithmic on that anytime you're going past i guess a year's worth of data i really should use log format if you use regular format it's similar but it's not going to line up the same you see that i think most of you probably realize that but uh, just in case you don't uh this came up in a coaching call so see this top here doesn't touch the top here or it's here so the logarithmic is what you want to use for longer time frames and then just double click up here to to zoom it in everyone got that so so that's what i'm watching for here and what we'd want to look for on that is uh let's see my uh there we go and um, certainly if we get a bearish ERI there, I really want you guys to be ready and waiting for the next sort of swing down and if it turns, because this, while this green zone, these were former buy zones and liquidity zones from the prior cycle up into 2020. Um, I, I'll put another darker green opportunity box, we can call it buy zone, but this is where I think the biggest opportunities are going to be here in the coming uh, year, because this is a risk reversed, uh, risk reduced rather. Why? Because we'll come down, if it comes down and bounces off this trend line, uh, this trend line is a very loose interpretation of it. It's just sort of a, a guess what I would see, would want to see higher lows. And, um, you know, Joe, I'd love to get your input on it too. But uh, these, uh, as long as it holds above the 21 day moving average, uh, then that's good news for us. So well, to break above this trend line is really what we want to see. And likely it'll come down in here. And the ideal scenario, and you know, we did nail this right down here. We got, we nailed it. So uh, I should have some credibility with you guys right now, but that's what we're looking for. Okay, right in here. And now the average true range on the weekly hasn't turned. That'll be interesting to see. I would imagine that's right around where that ATR would turn. Anything else, Joe, we should layer onto this thing for clues? Uh, I think that's uh, I think it's really well put. I mean, we're just looking to see uh, that additional close, um, the additional closes above that moving average. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. All right. Well, um, I do want to you know, see, uh, let me read the comments here. When to get out after the bell, but then the market is sideways and or down. Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Tori, we'll look at that. And just some, I asked what people are doing, doing in here. So swing trading. Oh, look at that. I can comment on your comments. There we go. Uh, and so swing trade, multi-day swing trading, long-term and tier one. So, so that's about what I've been saying uh, for you guys. Just want to make sure I'm in the right area that it's making sense and you're not, not looking at shorter time frames. You know, we certainly could look at some shorter time frames, but I don't want to jump to it quite yet. I do have a trade, uh, sorry, a window open in another tab. That is the one hour, four hour. I'm not sure how that got on a weekly. Let me just clean this up a bit. Interesting on that, that Bollinger Band, when it tightens, tells me a bigger move is coming. And uh, so volatility is low. It should be volatile week. Not really sure what's going to go on here. We want to wait and see. Today is kind of like Monday, though, you guys. Uh, yesterday was a holiday, as you know. But um, yeah, one hour, four hour, if you're shorter term trading, I have things on there like the vol index. So you can certainly do that if you're doing day trades intraday, which is same day or in, uh, interday, which is uh, today, tomorrow. So it's not really day trading, but sometimes. So there you go. And then for my day trading charts, I've got this one minute, three minute, uh, 15 minute and uh, four hour. It should be four hour. Sometimes I'm looking at daily. 
depending on what machine I'm on, iPad, things like that. All right. So with that in mind, uh, the question was when to get out after the bell with the market trade sideways. That's a good question, Tori. So let me do this here just so we cover all the bases here. Here's Bitcoin on the uh, weekly. Let me come back to a daily. And let's uh, pull up what we see here on the uh, trend indicator. So let's see. If you have a specific coin in mind, Tori, we can look at that. But her question is, after a bell, what happens when, when to get out after the bell, but the market is sideways or down? So I guess right now the bell triggered here, it pushed up and now it's going sideways. Do you want to take that one, Joe? I mean, I have my, my thoughts on it, but uh, you're the master and, and creator of these. So uh, here I'll just make the trend indicator bigger and you can tell me what you want to do there. But uh, this is the, that's the question. It's going sideways. Do I stay in? When do I sell? Well, I mean, look, you know, the, as long as you see the uh, numbers, the numeric values putting in a higher high, that's letting you uh, know that the market is still trending up higher. And, and uh, you know, and uh, what will happen is it'll go through the sequence, which is uh, one through seven. So right now we're on the four. So there could be a couple more numbers before we complete this sequence. Um, what we're looking for, um, well, first let's talk about what we don't want to happen. What, what we don't want to happen is for the color to change white because uh, the color changes white that's the first clue that the numbers are going to stop and if that happens then that would be the first sign whereas uh this market's running out of momentum and, and it's not going to continue to head higher um now in um in this case point uh it's still trending up higher and uh so you know uh as long as the numbers progress higher you have to stay with the trend and uh, you could show your positions um, uh, right below that moving average as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that was good to hear. Typically what I would say, well, I agree with that. Also when the midline goes from green to red and that's usually when the numbers start printing. And so back here, three didn't print a four. It went from green to red and then it went white but I have seen it where it'll come. Let's see if we can find it where it'll uh, continue going in the sequence. Generally, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but once it goes red, then it has to, that's kind of like a reset. And then here it went back to the key briefly, but we didn't get the bell. So back here we had a bell and a one, but sometimes you don't always want to go out of the trade. So here we had a key, a bell and a one, and it went to red, but it actually, okay, so I'm right. That's not exactly right. So it went red for a little bit, and then it went and resumed the number sequence. So I guess at some point in here, and maybe Joe, you can explain that, uh, not that people need to remember it, but at what point is it reset? And instead of going to the next number, it will print a new cycle. Is that a certain number of days or is there other criteria? No, well, the program is uh, searching for um, buy condition criteria. Now, what happens is, is, is that uh, sometimes the market, the market, when it's in these transitional points, it, it starts to trade, you know, a little bit erratic, and uh, you know, it'll start to get into this tight channel. So, if you notice in there, you know, in this case point on the examples, you know, if the market is sideways. You know, there may be just discrepancies and we just don't have a clear signal until the market starts to continue to go one direction. So, you know, that's what you're seeing here when you're seeing uh, the color change and you're seeing the red. And, you know, the key is a clue that things may potentially turn, but it's not until we get the bell uh, do we actually get the alert. And, uh, and, and in this case, you know, we got the key, but she wasn't ready. And then when we did get the the next key, then that's when we got the bell triggered, mm -hmm. and we got the follow through. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And you, for you uh, swing traders, this trend indicator is, is for you because if you wait till the bell, and as Joe said, if here the key triggered and did not get a bell, so that was not an entry. You might have gotten in partial trade on using the other indicators. Sometimes that happens, 
but this is great for those longer trades. So if you have an ERI TSI, uh, you might want to take a trade. And if the bell doesn't print, you're, you're in and out in a few days. This is more for that longer term trend. So, and what I love about this indicator, because it's so good. I mean, look at back here. We had, um, you know, the key the bell kind of went sideways, sideways, sideways. And then the bag of money would be get out. It did say a back end key and a bell there and it doesn't always work. But what I was going to highlight is that um, uh, if you stay, you can stay in as long as the numbers are printing and you should be getting out on this bag of money. You'll develop a your own um, sense of when to override that or not. And that to me would be if other stronger indicators uh, override it. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> I use the, I hesitate to use this because I was not, but it, like the Dungeons and Dragons game, I think I played it twice when I was a kid. But all I remember is like certain characters had stronger magic, right? So if you have a bell here on the trend saying get out of your position, but you have this kind of a setup here, this almost looks like our, my rocket signal, but we have the 21 and 50 day moving averages coming up. This thing's clearly picking up steam you know, that's when you may want to stay in the trade or take half profits. And this is, it's an art and a science. So, and you'll develop your own spidey sense. But in this case here, we're still in the trade on Bitcoin. So the bells here, we're kind of going sideways, but until this, until and unless this gives the money bag. So that would be five, six, seven, three days here. And, or this goes red and starts printing white candles. You'd stay in the trade, but you might have other exit criteria also like the Bollinger Bands. So specifically, let's see, you'd like to look at sand. We can do that. Okay. And Metis. Let's see. So here is uh, sand. Sandbox. Yeah, these Metaverse coins running again. I mean, these, these do look good, you guys. I mean, here, here's the difference here. And I'm just going to sidebar for a minute with the uh, just the 21 and 50 day EMA. I'll turn everything off so you're not visually distracted. So we did have a break above this here. Okay. We saw this breaking up above the 50, but the slope, I want you to notice the slope of the 50. It was still kind of going sideways. And what we didn't have is a cross. The 21 never crossed above it. And that is really pivotal, you know? So here briefly we did, but look at the slope here. We're still going sideways. That's when you want to be suspect. And as soon as that 21 kind of broke down below the 50, that was a strong sell signal. So boom, then the markets continued lower. And, uh, you know, once it was below the 21 day resistance, 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 and then it got back up. But this should have been suspect here. It looked great right here. I won't lie. And right in there, pushing higher, boom, fell down. Nobody could have predicted whatever the FUD that was. And um, then down, just again, resistance. But now that it's above, it's above the 21, above the 50. The 21 is crash, uh, going through the 50. This is strong. We have a bullish engulfing candle here. So if we then want to look at our other indicators, let's see. Uh, we didn't get an ERI on that so specifically there, although we did get it on the oscillator. So... This is just one thing I want to fix on this joke is sometimes the uh, the ERI oscillator uh, is uh, triggering, but the arrow isn't. So you get with the uh, the coder. Uh, you know, Joe, Joe and I sort of developed and spec this out. We had a, a third party guy code it, so I'll get that to him. That's why I watch both of these. The strongest signals are still going to show as arrows, and then of course we have the uh, TSI. Okay, which is in this upper area, a bit overbought on the TSI and signal still green and strong. So here's the thing to, to, to keep in mind when we're kind of in trading channels like this, you see these things oscillate from the top to the bottom. When we get into a very strong uptrend in bull market, and, and we're not near a bull market, not like 2021, that'll probably be 2024. But this thing can stay up here a long period of time. So you have to, it's a little bit confusing. You're just like, well, I should wait till the cycle's back down. And you shouldn't until unless you see this turn from green to red. Does that make sense? And so, but here I would imagine we'd see some kind of a pullback on Sandbox. Uh, another entry might be around 60 cents here. Yeah, as these start to push higher, and it might be a good time to start looking at the Ichimoku's. We usually do that in the Wednesday class. 
but so that's how you'd read that i will let's look at metis okay kucoin i think i hit the wrong one gate io same same so metis uh, giving more clear signals bearish eri this looks like it'll pull back but isn't that interesting we just got a key and a bell aha uh -huh. so joe uh, how would you uh you want to chime in on that how would you read that and then i'll give my my two cents well I, this is a, in this case point you see how the, the tsi is all the way up at the top and it's uh overbroad so um in this case point i would wait and look for that tsi to come down um below that overbroad area and uh that would be a better positioning on this yeah yeah, so so but what we'd likely see then is the bell would pause and it's already doing that. So there we go. And instead of getting a one here, there's no one. So probably what we'd likely see is a, a pause in the numbering. And then when it resumes, you'd start to see that one again. Let's see if I can show an example. So here's here's kind of an example. The key, uh, the bell, the one and the two, and then a pause and it came back down and then we saw a three and a four, and this one didn't really play out because the markets were not in great conditions, but you can see that's kind of how that would happen. So hopefully that makes sense. A small pullback, wait for the numbers to resume. So if you're in Menace, um, you know, I still think it goes higher, but you may have some DCA opportunities on it as it pulls back uh, to closer to 20. And let's just see, we can draw some trend lines here. Where do we think that would go? Possibly here, maybe a little lower. I mean, right in this range here. So it'll pull, it may pull back a little. I don't think it's put in a longer term top. So on the weekly, it hasn't. If we saw a big red arrow here on the weekly, then we might say, okay, this is going to maybe go down and retest the old lows. We don't see that. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question there. Uh, Kaya asked, what do black candles indicate? Black candles you're really only going to see if you have the volatility index on the chart. And, and I imagine this is what you're referring to. So when the vol index, uh, Joe created this so that you wouldn't even have to have the vol index in the viewable window. So the if it's a red line around the candle, then it went down for the day. If it was green, around it, it went up for the day but um and joe maybe and if they're green the candles are green that means it's up in the overbought territory yeah and if they're red if the candle body is red they are oversold so you have to go all the way back here to see that hmm. oh, let me try the four hour let's go back too far on that does that make sense though and, and joe if i I think I got that right. That's how I, I mean, pretty sure that's correct, but you can always chime in. You always have a certain nuances on these things. Uh, look, that's correct. Um, when we're seeing it black, it's letting you know that the volatility index is in between. Uh, when we're seeing it, the green or the red, it's at the extremes. So when you're utilizing this and you're looking to position yourself, you're really looking for it to be in those extreme areas whether if it's in the green or if it's in the red. Um, once it's in the black, that's letting you know that um, the market at that point is uh, starting to consolidate and most likely is completing a pattern, you know, because the market creates these wedge formations and then it makes its move. So um, a lot of times when we're seeing it black, it's completing this mathematical completion and it's getting ready to uh, make a next movement to either green or red um, color, which is um, the, the retracement movement. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, keep that in mind, uh, the vol index. And so if you're using this, it's great on the shorter time frames, one hour, four hour, uh, excellent uh, for opportunities in multi-day swing trading. On occasion, the daily will go down that low, but it's not that often. And let's just see, I think Solana would be a good example of that. In normal trading and in bull markets, the vol index rarely gets all the way down into that oversold on, on the uh, longer time frames like daily, weekly, monthly. But uh, you'll see it a lot more often on the um, four hour, one hour, four hour. So for 
shorter swing trades, longer day trades that can be, uh, that can be effective. So here on a daily, I mean, it was been down here quite a bit this last year, but if we go back farther than that, it was rare that it would get down into that lower range. So uh, let's see, hopefully that answers your question here. I'm just going to open this up a bit. You know, this big head and shoulders on Solana that has yet to play out. If you're long Solana, I'd be careful here. Uh, this push didn't happen <clears throat> but we are right up at resistance on the uh, macro scale here this up to that point and just to draw it all the way out well that those are the key points we're right up in this range solana needs to pull back either way i think this is a take profit zone on solana just without looking at anything on here tsi is over but uh, we're still in a number sequence on the trend I'm going to get rid of the vol index, but the vol index is in overbought territory also. So I would imagine at least some pullback and a pullback into this green zone with, with confirming bullish signals again would be a buy. But, you know, this big old head and shoulders would put us down. I mean, it's going to follow the market, but I had drawn this down to $3. If it gets, if Saul gets $3, you want to be buying it there. And, um, not, not financial advice, of course, you know, educational purposes. Um, it, it would be a, a great area to consider and look at it. I have to, you know, I can, I can give by, I can give by recommendations to groups. Although just so you guys know the FTC uh, and um, SEC, they're pretty particular about these things. And obviously we don't want to get uh, any troubles and issues there. So uh, not financial advice, do your own research. None of this is, you know, if you're going to trade, paper trade, all of that, uh, always the best responsibly. But this chart tells me you're going to hit some resistance, probably pull back in and uh, then possibly head higher or lower. And you now when in doubt, stay out, you guys. I mean, if you're not certain, don't make the trade. There's plenty of things lining up here that are looking very strong. I mean, look at Gala Games figures right as we took Gala, Sandbox, and Metis off of our watch list in Active Trader. That was the bottom. <laughs> it was right, right in here. Uh, and that's trading for you. So, uh, well, this looks pretty strong here, to, to be honest. I mean, it's uh, bullish engulfing, it's above the old support zone. And uh, I'm going to take off the vol index because I don't really need it on the daily here because uh, it does sort of throw me off when the candles are black sometimes. But, uh, you know, your eyes will adjust to all of these things. So I recommend keeping it simple when you're first starting out. But uh, Gala looks looks good to me. I'd like to see it pull back, obviously, but this is one that may not. It is uh, right up on above its old trend line resistance. So keep an eye on that. But watch, I wouldn't buy it today. These things always have the propensity to pull back by the end of the day. So you see this candle here, push right up to it and sold off. So if at the end of the day, this pulls back down and we have a big topping tail, well, then it's, it's clear it's going to pull back here and then try to push higher or break down. Uh, let's see, Polygon. Let's take, take a look at uh, Matic. Somebody wants to look at Matic. So this cup and handle keeps on getting longer and longer. It's going to be the longest handle in history, but that's okay. You call it gas in the tank. The longer that this consolidates, the more possibility and um, um, strength it has when it finally breaks out. So we're right up in here looking at breaking out. It hasn't yet. Uh, I mean, it's sort of trying, but it's running out of steam. And certainly we saw that happen back here. I think what I'll do is I'll draw this line up a bit just to this point. So what we need to see on Matic, strong push up here above the dollar, you know, dollar 20 is uh, where I had an alert. It did trigger back before, but I'm going to re-add that. But uh, Matic's very strong, you know, and then the long term, it's just going sideways. When it breaks, finally breaks up above, it's, uh, it's going to have a lot of... Um, interest i imagine going to the weekly you know and here's the thing the weekly 21 week moving average is starting to turn up higher we've got a tsi starting to turn higher we have a bullish eri there and the signal line keep an eye on on polygon i mean we've been watching it an active trader here but uh let's see what else i see we had a nice little bullish engulfing candle on the weekly there which as we know, usually follows through, but it's got to like get some strength up in here. You know, most likely I would say it just sort of pulls back a little, goes sideways for a bit, and then maybe it just kind of stops dead in the tracks and then it 
pushes higher. I mean, it's um, it can do anything, but I think just ding, bing, 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 something like that. That's what I think with Polygon. Uh, I mean, it's clearly holding on here strong unless there's some other big contagion event. But, you know, I think that uh, it's held pretty well. This the selling the sellers are gone. The long term holders are holding on here. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, well, let's see. Kaya says, look at Matic. Why the ERI chart showed a red before it pumped. Okay, let's put the ERI on here. Well, anything's going to pump because the whole market pumped. But uh, on a weekly, and here's this is the real answer to your question. You're probably referring to the daily. When in doubt, zoom out. The weekly on Matic has given us the clear signals here. Now, I don't know why. Well, we did. Yeah, we got to get that fixed, uh, Joe. Maybe together we can figure out why it's not because we're getting it on the oscillator. We had the green ERI oscillator, but we didn't get the arrow. So I'll screenshot that and I'll send it to uh, our guys so we get those matching up because the rest of these are matching up and it's got to be some slight tweak to the uh, the algo or the code. Um, I had sent him some other tweaks too that um, we're waiting on you guys. So we're continuing to prove this, improve this. But for now, do watch the uh, the oscillator version of it. So we did go in here, but re in reality, look at this: bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish. So we're bullish right now. Well, I'll go to the daily, and let's see what you were. Yeah. So well, and, and I imagine I don't even have to tell you. So the key with the ERI, you guys, the key is that you have to have the TSI confirm. All right, so right here you have, well, yours looks different because I was just on a weekly. Now I'm on a daily. Make sure you're on the right time frame, and you want to be looking at daily, weekly. But here's the thing. You see this red ERI that's, that showed bearish. I don't even have to, oh, before opening it, I can tell you that the TSI didn't confirm that. TSI was still going up in green. So listen to what I'm saying. Very important. These work in conjunction. If you get an ERI and the TSI is overbought or isn't down in this sweet zone, then I wouldn't consider it. And I would confirm it with the TSI breaking up above that 20 line right in here. That's how that works. You want those together. The green confirmed. The red did not. It was TSI was up, going up and up to the overbought territory. Does that help? Okay, that's on any time frame. This is always what I'm looking for first. And if I'm not certain on the daily, you know, I'll go to the weekly. Now, the daily indicates we'd have three more days of, you know, upside. So it could break up higher here, but we really want to see that weekly on both the ERI and the TS. The TSI is looking great on the weekly. Just, you know, we're just into that second week. So I'd love to see a daily pullback on, on Polygon. And see it pull back a bit, and that would be the buy spot because on the weekly we're going higher. Most most likely, I mean, uh, but uh, but that's where I would be, you know, putting my bets. Great, uh, Frontier Coin. Alex asks, on Feb twenty twenty one, had each pump up on the candle and then shot back down. Is there a reason coins do that? Uh, yeah, margin traders dumping it. It's a big one. Let's see. But let's pull up Frontier Coin. Not familiar with that. All right. Uh, and it's also looks like it's thinly traded. It's not on any of the uh, major exchanges here. So Frontier Coin, USD, I guess we'll go to OKX. Uh, I've never traded on OKX, but um, I assume that's the one. Go back to February of 2021. Which, uh, all right, I'll go, can I do, uh, it's going to make me go back a, whole, a long way if I do the weekly. Let's see if I can get it on the five day. So you said uh, February 2021, right in here. So are you are you talking about this particular candle here where it pumped up and came back down right there, Alex? And the answer is what I liked, you know, what I would be using on these for taking profits is the Bollinger Band that we showed you how to modify. And here's right here, I would have I would have sold it. So 
I'll see if I can get back over to a daily just so we're clear on that. I just have to zoom back out here. 2021. Try to make this bigger for you guys. But this was a, a pump and dump. I mean, it was on an obscure exchange. Uh, where's my volume? I don't know if I have volume on this chart for some reason, but at any rate, it's, you know, on these small exchanges and this shorter prices, February, it shot up. Whenever these things get outside of this upper Bollinger Band by a significant amount, sell it. Uh, and um, that isn't financial advice. This is just TA, some of what I've just it, it, invariably, with rare exception, very rare exception, that these don't pull back. And the Bollinger Band modification, again, is the standard will come with a two standard deviation. You just change yours to three. And if it goes, if it touches it in most solid coins, if it touches it, that's the take profit area. Now, should you always hold a moon bag? Absolutely. Uh, the one time that that's wrong and, you know, Amazon does a deal with AVAX and boom, we saw what happens. But this, you know, if, to me is, I don't, I'm not familiar with OKX if they have uh, margin trading. I imagine they do. But with these coins, like on KuCoin, I've told you this to you guys, be aware these pumps are the guys sitting around in day trading rooms, virtual trading rooms as well. And when one of them sees it, they have all these scanners and they, one of them will yell out frontiers pumping. They all jump on it, hammer down on the leverage on uh, low volume. So it spikes up in price. And then the late comers starts showing up on, on Coinbase or, or here on the scanner and trading view. And by that point it's too late. Those guys are selling into the new buyers. So be very careful with these. This was a clear signal uh, to me anyway to sold. Now you could have done very well if you sold right up here. It's eight dollars. Oh wow, that was a, that was a great pump. Um, yeah, you guys listen. Um, when something pumps like like that from a dollar twenty, even right here, you should have would have would have sold half ideally at two sixty. Why? Because it got above that upper Bollinger Band. But that's why you keep some. But but mark my words, when it gets this far above the third standard, the, th the three BB, we call it the modified Bollinger Band with the th a third standard deviation. When it gets this high out of here, you want to be taking profits because it's going to come down. It's, it's like a rubber band. Imagine this upper band is a rubber band and the farther you stretch it, uh, the stronger it's going to pull back to the middle and very often will go to the other extreme. And uh, and here we saw it at least came down to the midpoint. But hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, KuCoin especially, Alex, because uh, it was a, um, a mainstream, you mean moonstream? Frontier. Um, rings the bell. Was it, our, was it our pick in February? Was that when it happened? Setting it for previous highs. Yeah. So, I mean, it's possible. You know, we try, we, we try, we try not to move the market, but sometimes... Mike will pick or I'll pick a small cap and, you know, you guys start buying it and then other people start buying it because it's a uh, lower volume or unusual volume, you know, and then the, the hits on the, the high movers list and the day traders come in here hammering it with 20 or 50 or 100 X leverage. And uh, but the other thing you should be examining here too, though, Alex here, anyone else see this? It's not textbook but it's pretty close. This green candle here sitting on the 21 day moving average. What is that? You guys, I'm not going to tell you. I'm I, some, you know, I know I'm going to wait for one of you to say it. So a rocket. Thank you, Tori. Yes. This is the rocket on the launch pad. Now, ideally these, uh, these close at the top of the candle, but do you see what it did? It shot up and then it sold off a bit just under that Bollinger Band on the right edge. But the next day, that's why these rockets are so great. And Joe, I don't know if you've heard me talk about it. It's just something that we've coined and I've noticed when um, it's a great little indicator. So basically, when you see a tail uh, coming down and touching or ideally below the 21 or 50 day moving average, 
Uh, think of this as rocket fuel, you guys, and this is the fuse. So the fuse was short on this one, but the fuel was high. So it shot all the way up here, ran out of fuel, and it fell back to Earth. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. If we could program that, Joe, that'd be... How many of you would like to have a rocket indicator and a scanner? Uh, it's got to be doable. I'll spec it out, maybe see if you can. Uh, you know, I noticed it last year, Joe, and is when it when they land when they're sitting on support either a trend line or ideally a uh, moving average with that tail ideally the tail goes below the uh, launch pad look at all these people hell yeah yes 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 all right let's see if we can build that because i mean um even this one here it well it should be a bullish candle but even this one here kind of was shot up but that's well that's not a rocket that's just uh that's bullish and golf that one didn't play out but you guys have seen that and the prime examples are um you know the thing is the, uh, understand this these smaller cap ones are going to have a little bit different patterns but this one's kind of a rocket short fuse lots of fuel boom 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 but that's also bullish engulfing so it doesn't exactly qualify but, but my point back here, Alex, was if you saw this and a rocket on there and it shot up and then you're, you'd be anticipating a, a shot up. So you probably sell half of it here and wait for a pullback. Selling some, you want to be building and exiting positions and stages, not all in and all out. And so and then but certainly here, when they get that extended, I mean, right in here, that was a big green candle. You might have been saying, wow, this is going to the moon. These are profit-taking moments, profit-taking 101. Also here, this would have been a big green candle. And you guys see this? Outside that upper Bollinger Band, you should be selling into that because it pulls it back in. Yeah, no, I like it. The rocket just sounds cool. And everyone wants it, so I'll have to build it. I'll try to build it now. But only for you guys. Um, just looking for more examples. All right. Um, I was going to move on. Uh, I'll, okay, Alex, just uh, I'll look at that one more time and then we'll move on. Anyone have anything else? And uh, we're coming up on the hour. These classes are just about an hour. So uh, you know, Joe's, or Joe's busy trading. I'm busy doing other things. So let's see. Eight point eight dollars Would it be resistance? Yeah, I mean, exactly. So this would be resistance because that's kind of where, I mean, it, it was a while ago, but $8 would be resistance for a number of reasons. It's a psychological round number. And, um, you know, these, these, it, there'll be resistance before that though. I mean, you could, you want to look for these liquidity pockets and resistance areas where distribution was taking place. I think it's going to be more of a psychological level, but it's got a long way to go. But here, here's the thing though. And I, I, sorry, I forgot it was a moonstream pick. If it had good fundamentals, this is something I do recommend is if you start to like a chart, let's just go to a weekly so we can, don't have to zoom out so far. When this thing starts getting back above the 21 week moving average, let's set an alert. I've been uh, telling you guys an active trader that uh, look for the ones that have the farthest to go if they get back to old highs. Now, be somewhat careful with that and have stop losses because these are also the ones that may not survive. I mean, we don't know how long this bear market's going to go, but I would certainly take some profits here. That would be a 14X, about $3.20. And you'll probably want to take some here. This would be a resistance area, but still that's 633%. You know, this thing's not going to go straight up, but if you did hold it till a new high and you like the project, 3,700%, 37X, pretty good. I would myself wait till, well, let me, let me take that back. Your eyes, you know, I'd wait. I'd want to see our signals lining up personally, but TSI looks good. Daily, let's take a look at the daily. Not really, it's a little bit overbought. So anyway, but if you like the project, I mean, certainly 37X, worth it. And if we were to do that here and put a, um, a mock trade on, I'll turn off that uh, Bollinger Band because it served its purpose, but... Um, you know, where do you think you guys would put a stop loss on here? You know, you could buy it here. Ideally, you'd buy it back on a pullback here to moving averages. So let's say that happens. Stop loss here uh, below the recent swing low there. 
And if the target then is up here somewhere, you know, that's a risk favorable trade. Um, I think, you know, even back into this range, you know, likely it would have some trouble right there. And if we wanted to put that Fibonacci golden pocket on it, let's just say, bada bing, bada boom. Well, that one already completed because it pumped up to there. So the Fib golden pocket's already been achieved. Not as relevant. You know, I don't like to come in and make smaller ones, but you know, here, if this is your target, uh, that doesn't quite, that doesn't quite work. You'd, you'd want to hold that for longer, but you know, six to one or risk reward ratio in the longer term. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you, Tori. Well, we're right up at the hour, Joe, any uh, words of wisdom, anything else you want to look at? We could skim the, the movers and shakers lists, but, um, <clears throat> no, um, pretty much. And we just covered it. I mean, just set your alerts out there and just be careful. And, uh, you know, cause the market's a little bit overextended from where it's at. Um, you know, it's kind of a little bit, I, I think, believe a little bit overdone over the last week. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm looking for some type of uh, pullback and then, then look for this next leg. So, you know, generally the market moves like within uh, cycles. So um, this next cycle, I think is going to be the more stronger one. And, and what it's going to do now is it's just going to pull back like a, a rubber band and uh, really just go for it. Then this next wave up. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. Perfect. Exactly. That's, 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 uh, this is just a rough estimation, but these are overextended pushed higher. We've had like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up days in a row on helium and a pullback is uh, likely. So uh, we'll unpack this a little bit more on tomorrow's active trader class Bitcoin as well. We had a little bit of a day, but you can see all these resistance areas. It doesn't take a rocket surgeon as my old business partner used to say uh, to, to see that this is a little bit overextended. We'll likely pull back here. And then that next push higher will be essentially, you know, all bouncing off the trampoline right now. We're jump, we're on the roof. And if we jump off the roof, this is the trampoline. So boom, uh, we could see some much higher highs here, but I want to, I want to caution everybody that these bear market rallies are still dangerous. And there are some people saying, Hey, look, I think this thing it pushes up for a bit, but then we have another big leg down. It's certainly still in the cards. Uh, we don't know what other shoes are going to drop. We don't want to be complacent. So please make sure you have your emergency stops in place because, you know, if we see just another, we haven't had a big capitulation, you guys, that's what scares me. And we'll talk about that more in the tomorrow's class. And so in some ways I'd like to see that, um, but I, I don't want to see it be a huge dump like that. But if it happens and we get a big ERI on the weekly, then I think that's the bottom. Uh, we, we can push higher here and hit some resistance and roll back down. But if it does turn over, I mean, that would be normal as long as we continue to put in higher lows. If we don't look out below, but you know, that's the markets. That's uh, what happens. We have to be prepared for anything. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow and uh, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, we'll have the recording up in the uh, various areas uh, here and uh, probably by today. Um, so uh, just to touch on that too, um, those of you in Crypto Mastery, I guess what we'll do is put in the Crypto Mastery members area. Those of you who are an active trader, Maybe what we'll do is create a new uh, section and just put it in the uh, M3 area so that uh, you guys don't have to keep jumping and logging into two places. So let me discuss it with the team. We're trying to kind of streamline everything and um, uh, we'll be doing more of that uh, here this year. So, all right, everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, thank you, Joe, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, thank you. Have a great week trading, everyone.